58 South Spalding in Chicago. In the late afternoon hours of March 1st, 2023, the defendant and his girlfriend began arguing about their relationship and living arrangements. During that argument, the defendant charged with his hands outstretched at his girlfriend, who stepped out of the way to avoid being struck. The defendant then threatened to get his gun. The defendant's girlfriend exited the home through a side door located on 53rd Street. She called 911 and reported that the defendant had a gun. As she spoke to 911, the defendant followed her. The defendant grabbed the phone from his girlfriend's hand, hung up on 911, and threw her phone. The defendant's girlfriend continued to argue with the defendant and went back inside of her home. Uniformed police officers arrived shortly after on the scene. These officers were in full uniform and in a marked SUV. The first two officers approached the front door of the residence located at 5258 South Spalding and heard a noise in the gangway. The defendant jumped out of a window of the residence and into the gangway and fled back towards the alley. An officer observed something in the defendant's hand and believed that it was a gun. The defendant entered the alley where he came upon two neighbors standing in a nearby garage. The defendant dropped a gun and a magazine in the alley in front of these neighbors. He picked up the gun and the magazine, inserted the magazine into the pistol, and asked the neighbors if he could hide the gun in the garage where they were standing. When the neighbors indicated no, the defendant entered the garage they were in and fled into the backyard of the connected residence. The defendant then climbed up onto a car into the backyard and hopped the fence. He hopped the fence northbound into the next yard. At this point, the first two officers who had arrived at the residence had relocated through the alley and into the same yard as the defendant and observed the defendant jump that fence. Those officers radioed that the defendant had jumped a fence and was back on Spalding. Defendant fled east across Spalding Avenue, then ran north on Spalding past Sawyer Elementary School. The victim, who was working and on duty as a Chicago police officer, was responding to the scene to assist the first responding officers. The victim was in full uniform and in a marked Chicago Police Department SUV. That SUV was being driven by the victim's partner. As the victim and his partner were driving northbound on Spalding, they observed the defendant running, also northbound on Spalding. The victim exited the squad car and gave chase to the defendant on foot. The defendant turned and went through a gate and entered the school, the schoolyard area of Sawyer Elementary as the victim continued to chase him. The victim gave multiple verbal commands for the defendant to stop running. The defendant turned and went into the gate leading into the fenced yard containing a playground. The defendant's back was to the victim and his hands were not visible from the victim's position. Once the victim was only a few feet away from the defendant, the defendant looked back over his shoulder in the victim's direction and immediately turned towards the victim while racking the slide on his pistol. The defendant pointed his handgun at the victim. The defendant and the victim both fired their guns. The defendant fired five times and the victim was struck a total of three times in the head, the arm, and the leg. The victim was able to get off two shots and the defendant was struck in the mouth area. At the time of the shooting, there were civilians, including multiple children, on that playground who took cover under a slide. Defendant turned, the defendant turning towards the victim, raising his gun, and shooting the victim is all captured on the victim's body-worn camera. The victim collapsed immediately after being shot. The defendant stumbled a few feet away into the new, nearby school parking lot before falling to the ground, with his firearm falling to the ground next to him. The victim's partner exited his squad car and approached the defendant. The defendant stood up refused to comply with commands, and tried to walk away from the police despite being shot in the face. 
The defendant was subsequently tased and handcuffed. Officers recovered the .45 caliber handgun the defendant used to shoot the victim from the ground beside the defendant. Other officers began emergency life-saving measures on the victim. The victim was loaded by officers into a squad car and eventually transferred to an ambulance that took him to Mount Sinai Hospital, where he was ultimately pronounced deceased. The cause of death was multiple gunshot wounds and the manner of death was homicide. The victim sustained a gunshot wound to the left temple above his left eye, which exited the back of his head. The victim also sustained a through and through gunshot wound to his left forearm and a through and through gunshot wound to his left calf. The scene was processed by evidence technicians who recovered five 45 caliber shell casings, the victim's nine millimeter semi-automatic duty weapon, and two spent nine millimeter shell casings. The victim does not have any publishable background. It is the people's position that Stephen Montano must be held mandatorily no bail pursuant to 725 ILCS 5 backslash 110-4A in that this is an offense where a life sentence may be imposed as a consequence of conviction on two bases. First, the defendant is responsible for the death of a person and the defendant was armed with a firearm that he personally discharged that firearm and approximately caused death to another individual. Second, that the murdered individual was a peace officer. Additionally, it is the people's position pursuant to statute that the proof is evident or the presumption is great that Stephen Montano is guilty of this offense and pursuant to statute, the court must held or set this defendant's bond at no bail. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.